Dr. Sage here. Today we begin the first of five videos where we learn about aerobic cellular respiration. As a preview for that, okay, what we're going to learn about is how cells take the energy that's stored in glucose and then in the presence of oxygen, they break that glucose down into carbon dioxide. Now, since you're taking a large complex molecule of glucose, breaking it down into smaller molecules, carbon dioxide, it's gonna be releasing energy, an exergonic reaction. The cell is then gonna capture that energy to charge up ATP. Okay, so the main purpose of aerobic cellular respiration that happens using the mitochondria is to charge up the cell's rechargeable battery called ATP. Now, just to keep in mind the big, big picture, okay, where glucose comes from is a process of photosynthesis that happens inside chloroplasts. Plants take carbon dioxide from the air and water from the soil, and then using energy from sunlight, they build that carbon dioxide up into the large glucose molecule. Okay, we're gonna learn about photosynthesis in our next set of video lectures. In this set of video lectures, the main thing we're gonna focus on is aerobic cellular respiration. Okay, you're taking energy from glucose, which is sugar, which is food, and using that energy to charge up ATP. So in this set of lectures, we're going to be discussing energy moving from one molecule to a different molecule. For example, energy starts out in the molecule of glucose and it ends up in the molecule of ATP. Well, it turns out a lot of the time when you need energy to move from one place to another place, how you do that is you transfer electrons from one molecule to a different molecule. Recall, as we learned in the chemistry chapter, that electrons carry energy and they can carry different amounts of energy. So if you move an electron from one molecule to a different molecule, what you're really doing is you're moving energy from one molecule to a different molecule. And by transferring that energy, in the end, that energy is going to go into that molecule of ATP. So there's a name for chemical reactions where you're transferring an electron that's called a redox reaction. Okay, redox reaction is any chemical reaction where you're transferring electrons. Now redox is actually short for reduction and oxidation. Okay, so redox is a redox reaction is a reduction and an oxidation. Okay, so what do those terms mean? Anytime a molecule is losing electrons, anytime a molecule gives away electrons, loses electrons, that molecule is oxidized. That's what it's called when if you lose electrons, you're oxidized. The opposite of that would be a reduction. Anytime a molecule gains or adds electrons, it is reduced. Now at first, these terms might sound a little bit confusing because I'm telling you you're adding electrons, but I'm calling it being reduced. Remember what electrons are. They're a subatomic particle that has a negative electrical charge. So think about math. If you add a negative, what happens is the number gets reduced. The number gets smaller. So that's why it's called a reduction, because you're adding an electron that has a negative electrical charge. For example, one of the very first chemical reactions that I taught you in the chemistry chapter was how to make sodium chloride or table salt. Okay, so what happens is a sodium atom is going to react with a chlorine atom. Okay, that chlorine is going to steal the electron from sodium. That creates a positively charged sodium ion and a negatively charged chloride ion. Okay, so what that means is an electron is being transferred. So this is a redox reaction. So the sodium is losing an electron, therefore that sodium is oxidized. The chlorine is gaining an electron, therefore the chlorine is reduced. So this was a redox reaction, or in more general form, some chemical X has an electron, it's gonna react with chemical Y. Chemical Y is gonna take that electron. So chemical X is losing the electron, so chemical X is oxidized. Chemical Y is gaining an electron, so chemical Y is reduced. So an oxidation is any time you lose an electron, a reduction is any time you gain an electron. The two together are called redox reactions. The reason we can call it a redox reaction is because they always have to happen together. Anytime somebody gains an electron, well, that electron had to come from somewhere, which means somebody had to lose an electron. So anytime you have a reduction, you have to have an oxidation at the same time. So in a redox reaction, the electron donor is called the reducing agent and the electron receptor is called the oxidizing agent. Now, some redox reactions do not actually transfer electrons, which that sounds like I completely just lied to you because I said that's what a redox reaction is, is when an electron moves from one molecule to a different molecule. But you can actually have a redox reaction without a transfer of electrons. 
for example, if we look at this chemical reaction here, methane gas, that's what this molecule is, can react to oxygen gas to produce carbon dioxide and water. So that's a chemical reaction. In this chemical reaction, um, let's focus on carbon for a second, like this carbon here. Okay, this carbon is not going to end up gaining or losing any electrons. It has the same number of electrons before the reaction and after the reaction. It doesn't gain or lose any electrons. Okay, but recall this bond here. Remember that's a covalent bond sharing a pair of valence electrons. And recall that there were two different types of covalent bonds, polar covalent bonds and nonpolar covalent bonds. This bond here is a nonpolar covalent bond. Carbon and hydrogen are equally sharing those electrons. So what that means is carbon has these electrons literally 50% of the time, half of the time, the electrons are with carbon. But after the reaction, carbon has covalent bonds to oxygen. Oxygen is much more electronegative than carbon, so the electrons like oxygen more, so the electrons end up hanging out with oxygen more often than with carbon. And I'm making this number up, but let's say the electrons are now with carbon 20% of the time, whereas they were with carbon 50% of the time. So carbon did not lose any electrons, but it did lose how often it has the electrons. That's still called an oxidation. So to be oxidized, you either have to lose electrons or decrease how often you have your electrons. That's an oxidation. Similarly, let's look at the oxygen here. Before the reaction, nonpolar covalent bonds equally share the electrons, has the electrons half of the time. After the a reaction, oxygen is now in a polar covalent bond with hydrogen. The electrons like oxygen more than they like hydrogen. So those electrons are with oxygen. Again, I'm making this number up, but let's say 80% of the time. So oxygen did not gain any electrons, but it did increase how often it has those electrons. That's still a reduction. So to be reduced, you either gain electrons or you increase how often you have your electrons. What this means is an atom can be at different levels of how reduced or how oxidized it is. For example, if we focus on the carbon here in these molecules, Okay, as you move from the left to the right, what's happening, this carbon is equally sharing all of these electrons. Then it has one polar covalent bond where it has the electrons a little bit less. Then it has the electrons even less. Then it has them even less. Then it has them even less. So as you move from the left to the right, that carbon is losing how often it has all of its electrons. So it's becoming more oxidized. If you go in the opposite direction from right to left, this carbon is increasing how often it has those electrons, so it's becoming more reduced. That's just an example. You don't have to memorize that example. But what you do need to know is the more reduced something is, the more free energy it's storing. And if you think through that, that makes sense because I said that electrons have energy. They're storing energy. The more reduced you are, basically what that means is the more electrons you have, therefore the more energy you have. The more oxidized you are, the less energy you're storing, because you have less electrons or electrons less often, so you have less energy. So more reduced, you're storing more free energy. More oxidized, you're storing less free energy. Now, for speaking of storing energy, we need to talk a little bit about the cellular batteries. One we've already talked about in great detail, that's ATP. Now, for ATP, that's a charged up battery, whereas ADP is a dead battery. Okay, well, it turns out your cells have more than one type of battery. Another type of battery your cells use, it works the same way as ATP. The, the chemicals, the molecule is just a little bit different. Don't worry about right now about the differences in the molecule. But that's GTP. GTP is three phosphates, just like ATP is three phosphates. GDP is two phosphates, just like ADP is two phosphates. So GT is a charged up battery, GDP is a dead battery. Just like ATP is a charged up battery, ADP is a dead battery. Okay, but then we have another category of batteries, another type of batteries, and those are called electron carriers. Okay, so these ones down here, those are the electron carriers. Now the reason they're called electron carriers is because they have the ability to carry extra electrons. Recall that electrons have energy, so if you're carrying extra electrons, you're therefore carrying extra energy. So NAD+, plus, that's going to be the dead battery. NADH, that's the charged up battery. When you add this H, that's a hydrogen atom, it has electrons, so you're adding extra electrons. So since it's carrying extra electrons, it's carrying extra energy. 
FAD is a dead battery, FADH2 is a charged up battery. Again, by adding these hydrogens, you're adding electrons, therefore you're adding energy. So everything on the left, those are your dead batteries. Everything on the right, those are your charged up batteries. Okay, these are the electron carriers. Now normally you wouldn't say a charged up battery versus a dead battery. How you'd actually refer to them is these are the reduced versions of those electron carriers. Remember they're carrying extra electrons, so therefore they're carrying extra energy. Carrying extra electrons means they're more reduced. These are the oxidized versions of the electron carriers. Recall they've lost their electrons, so when you go from NADH to NAD+, you've given away your electrons, you've lost your electrons. So those are the oxidized versions of the electron carriers. Okay, so those are our batteries, and those are redox reactions, which is how you transfer electrons, which is also how you transfer energy. That's the end of this first video. In the next video, we're going to start discussing the actual process of aerobic cellular respiration, which is going to be using these batteries. So until then, this has been Dr. Sage.